Well, the stars freaking align for this one, because this is a blaster I legitimately never thought I would be able to get my hands on. Because if you know anything about the Game Face Geon, uh, maybe nothing, because there's not very many videos out there on this blaster, because it was so bad that it was pulled from shelves completely, and they were just hoping everybody would forget about it. And that's really tough, because the Game Face Tryon is one of of the best blasters you could buy right now. It's a really good, ergonomically beautiful pump action magazine fed primary, and yet uh, this is their own original design. Yes, this is the worst blaster of 2023, by far, because even though things like the Nerf Ender Dragon Blaster and uh, nerf pretty much everything else, at least those are functional blasters. This is a $50 paperweight, a beautiful, paperweight. Where do we begin? Well, this little guy popped up on Amazon and Target for the grand total of about 50 US dollars around March of this year. And it is meant to be a sidearm springer blaster, something that you could use when your primary, probably your game face try on, is out of ammo or jammed or something like that. And I'm not gonna lie, this thing looks freaking sweet. This design looks amazing. But there's a problem, because many of you probably already know what this blaster actually is, and that is, it's a gecko. Now, a gecko is a good blaster, but this is a Chinese clone of the gecko. <laughs> Gameface's parent company bought the rights to a Chinese clone of the Gecko and just put their logo on it and threw it on store shelves. Wouldn't it be the worst thing in the world if it actually worked. Back of the Blaster does give us some insights here. You've got a front sight, you've got a rear sight, you've got a slide lock, a Picatinny rail under the barrel, a trigger, very important, a magazine release button, also very important, and a quick release magazine, probably the most important. Do not toy with Game Face, this is the dart of war. Uh, well, definitely not this one, which I picked up. The only reason why I got a chance to get this Blaster is because Out of Darts was selling it at his warehouse for $10. And I paid that $10 knowing this was gonna be a fun video. Now you would have noticed on the front of the box, but this is actually doing a really good thing. On paper, anyway, this blaster for $50 is giving you quite a bit because you get the blaster itself and you get two magazines and enough darts to fill both magazines. Every single magazine fed anything should always come with two magazines minimum. Power to game face for actually doing that. At least with the Geon and not the, not the Tryon. Taking it out of the box, it looks so good. And honestly, it feels really nice. Like the material quality of this blaster is very, very good. Can't say the same for the ergonomics because this grip is about as bad as a grip can get. I'm sure you might be noticing the problem here, but I'll give you a hint. The dovetail right here is so low that it actually extends the length your trigger finger needs to stretch, which means an already large grip is made larger because of this. While it's serviceable, you can see how little room I have to actually try to squeeze that trigger. I don't have the biggest hands in the world, as you would know, and this is really awkward. Very, very awkward. But the design looks amazing. It seriously looks like something right out of Titanfall. If this blaster actually worked like advertised, you would want to use this because it just looks and feels flippin' fantastic. But of course you can't buy one because they're unobtainium because they pulled them from shelves shortly after release. Magazine release uh, doesn't freely drop mags. Maybe I can with the, with the, oh, kinda, hold on. Wait, let's take, get our hand completely off the mag awkwardly. You sorta can. Uh, you won't want to, but you sorta can. Now, of course, how does this thing work? It's got a hammer on it. Uh, that does absolutely nothing. You maybe think like you pull back on the gray piece. Nope, that's part of the grip. That's the frame of the black. You grab the barrel, but of course you could prime it back, load in a fresh mag, push that down, and then fire and repeat that priming process. And well, that's the way the Geon do. The mags are okay. They're proprietary to the Geon and they have like one of those uh, airsoft style things. I don't know what the point of that is because it doesn't lock into place anywhere. And they hold 10 darts each, which is honestly more than enough, especially for a sidearm blaster. 
One, two, eight. Maybe that's why you need that? Oh, maybe there are only eight rounds? Ten. But you, you could not slam a mag in there. It's not flared at all. It's a really deliberate reload. But, trying that back, let it go. It technically chambered a dart. Oh my gosh, I don't think it did. Is it not in? Did you, did you even work? Oh, sorta, kinda. Let's try that again. There we go. It's got a little bit of a pop to it and we'll take it over to Freddy really quick to see what it's hitting velocity wise, but it's uh, also w the worst inconsistent thing ever. And that is one of the killer problems with the Geon. It also jams all the freaking time. There is something to actually be said of this blaster that could theoretically redeem it. But let's take it over to the chronograph and then of course show you it against the target system to see what we're dealing with stock here. All right, Geon, time for disappointment. I know, Freddy, this one's disgusting. 94.7, one, 121.1, 100.5, 115.5, 65.9, oh God, 98.2, and here lies the problem. 100.8, it's not wanting to fire. Ah, horrible. Honestly, not that bad velocity wise. That's not the reason why it's horrible, but I had to hold the breech closed on many shots to get it to do anything because it just won't chamber. Correct. It didn't even try with that one. You have a dart. It, it, it locked back. It has a dart. 94.6. Also reloads really awkwardly. Does it have a chop? No, it's just... Uh, let's see if we can even hit a target. Ooh, frighteningly close. There we go. Oh, that shot was awful. There we go. Uh, it's okay. It's definitely serviceable. Uh, it's also not meant to be a long distance plinker, but Let's see how it does against the target anyway. All right, let's see how this goes. That was terrible. There we go. If it fluctuates between 70 and 120 FPS, some shots are gonna go way too low. Others are gonna go perfect. And it legitimately can't tell it has one dart left in the mag. It locks back when there's still darts left. That. <laughs> oh, oh my God, what does it even do? Did it, did it chamber? Oh. Twelve. You would be hard pressed to find a short dart blaster that will perform that badly, but let's give it one more shot. All good shots. That was a bad one. And we still have a dart left. Some of you are gonna say I'm doing this on purpose and that you could do better and that goes without saying, but this blaster is genuinely awful to use. If the grip is awful, the trigger is awful, operating it is awful, it doesn't do the one cool thing that it should be able to do. <sighs> yeah. <sighs> Three. Oh, no it won't. <sighs> uh, walk back again, still had a dart left. Can we, can we end this, please? Thank you, 10. Back in the box it goes.
So again, I gotta point out that this was not actually made by Game Face. This was a design that they bought from somebody who cloned the Gecko, and that probably has a lot to say with why it's not very reliable or good. It has all the potential to try to be good, but it just doesn't work. It's got a metal barrel. It has a top firing barrel. I mean, it has an okay velocity and it should be hitting harder, but doesn't. It's got a slide release on it, which is super cool. And it obviously looks, it doesn't feel, but looks incredible. But it was so bad that they immediately pulled it from shelves and never spoke of it ever again, which is why I never got my hands on one because by the time I realized it was out, it was gone. But that does leave us with one interesting thing. This blaster has slam fire. Problem is, is that you gotta hold down the trigger, pump it back, push it forward, and yeah, that's more than a little awkward. That is very awkward and does not feel right in any way. And much like you would remember with my original Gecko video, uh, this thing could do with a little pump action grip on it because since it works in slam fire and it has that potential, uh, you could get rid of a lot of the awkwardness with a little pump action grip on it connected to the slide that could travel along this Picatinny rail down here. That would be awesome. It's uh, too bad the blaster's gone, it's dead. You can't buy one and even if you could, why would you? I spent $10 on one because, well, I'm gonna throw it back in the box and put it on a shelf and have it somewhere so we can laugh at it for years to come. And if you really thought that this was just a complete accident, it has two rear sights. Uh, the, the front sights are actually rear sights. There's there's two sets of, you you really can't aim with this thing. Not that you could hit anything anyway, but it's extremely awkward. And I'm really glad I got to do this video to show you because I almost thought I'd never get a chance to. Thank you, Out of Darts, for allowing me to buy this thing. Thank you, Game Face, for <laughs> making this a thing. And by golly, did you make absolutely the worst blaster of 2023. Congratulations, well done. Congratulations. 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 All right, I'm going to the bar.